Okay, hi there, Yurd. So this is another episode of Yearbook University having to do with design. Uh, today we're going to be talking about dominant elements, and I know I kind of covered that briefly um, in Intro to Design, but we're going to be delving into it in a little bit of more depth um, and, um, you know, thoroughness. So uh, bear with me. I'll try and go as fast as possible. So uh, dominant elements uh, are elements that usually link together the two pages and they um, most often should cross the gutter therefore linking the two kind of being a little binding agent. Uh, the gutter is the little uh, kind of cavern in between the two separate pages that we call the spread. When you have two pages together it makes a spread where they fold together that little space in between is called the gutter. Um, dominant elements uh, can usually either be one photo or a module or grouping of photos. And um, one thing that we should add on is that they are usually two to three times larger than the other elements on the spread, therefore uh, very clearly making them the dominant element. By making them two to three times larger than anything else on the spread, you're pretty much guaranteeing that it will be the most dominant eye-catching thing on your spread. Um, what we do by creating a dominant element is um, we make what's called emphasis happen. Um, and that is by creating focal point or center of interest on our spread. Um, this can also be achieved uh, by creating emphasis with color, weight, shape, that sort of thing. Um, so hierarchy, we talked about this in the previous video. Um, hierarchy helps uh, lead your viewer around the spread. So what comes first, second, third, fourth, so on and so forth, establishing kind of visual hierarchy. Mama or Papa, Mama, Baby Bear, you know, stair stepper. Um, dominant elements, again, are the focal point um, and they create a starting point for your eye to travel here first and then weave around your spread. So it's uh, what pulls you in first. Um, so here we have an example of a spread. Um, if you guys can look at it real quick. Um, looking at it, it is very clear um, that there is a dominant element on this page. It, it should uh, the first thing that draws you in should be this photo right here. That's because, one again, it's two to three times larger than anything else on the spread as far as size of photo. Also, it creates this nice leading line up to the um, headline of the package it corresponds with. Um, it creates a nice eye, fly, uh, eye flow from the dominant into the um, content package. Um, in contrast, when we look at this spread, um, it's really well organized. There's lots of um, different kinds of content on here, but there really isn't a clear dominant, and that's what's wrong with it. Um, we have nice alignment. We've got nice spacing happening, but there's nothing that really kind of, boom, pulls your eye in because everything's like, boom, 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 boom. It's all about kind of the same uh, size. The spacing's consistent. Um, the photo size or general photo size, package size, is about the same. So looking back at this one, um, you can see that this one is much uh, preferred because again we have a very strong indicator of what is our dominant. Um, here we can look at this spread. Again, we don't really have a clear dominant because these two are kind of um, fighting for dominance along with that one. So all three of these are about the same size. There's no clear winner out of this triangle. Um, so it kind of uh, makes our eyes not know where to land. We don't have like a landing strip to go, land here first followed by this, followed by this, followed by this. So if we were to size up this photo and size down maybe those two or make the team photo the largest and then these two a little bit smaller, that would really help this spread to be more successful. In contrast, looking at this spread, um, you can see that it's a very clear dominant. This uh, fire uh, photo right here is two to three times larger than anything else on the spread. We also have a photo package laying on top of it, making it very clearly um, uh, where we should land up. It's the, the dominant. Okay, so photo placement. Um, again, think about varying uh, the photo size, shapes, orientation. Um, if a photo crosses the gutter, um, it has a unified look, but be careful when you put things that cross the gutter that we don't have people's faces or nose or mouth in the gutter. So we don't want to cut anybody's face off. And in fact, um, the gutter, because it arcs into the gutter of the book, we lose a little bit of this real estate right in the arc. So you have to be really careful to give the gutter um, quite a bit of space on either side. So we don't have anybody's faces. We don't want to have hands going into the gutter where they might like get cut off and things like that. Um, so photo placement is important whether across the gutter or not. Overall, just really think about hierarchy. Um, make your best photos your dominance like we talked about yesterday.
Uh, so some dominance dues really make sure that these end up into your notebook. Do have a dominant image or package on the spread. It pulls the reader into the design. Do strategically place the center of interest near the center to avoid eye, um, to direct the eye around the spread. So again, make the most impactful thing in the center of your spread. Give that person a landing strip. The most interesting photo, the most interesting story, the biggest, most awesome thing should be in the center of your bullseye. Uh, do keep in mind that the dominant image and package should touch the eye line. So on the next spread, I'll talk to you about what an eye line is. Um, so here we can see dominance done right. The dominant element, if it was about this size, would be two to three times larger than the next um, largest element on the spread. So again, this is about how big it should be, that photo. Um, here you can see this is where the page cutter would be. So um, this photo is no bueno because this guy's head is stuck in the gutter. Don't be in the gutter. We don't want to make any gutter rats. He would lose his head and it would be very awkward. Um, so we would want to crop or move or shift this photo over so we're not losing this person into the gutter, the great abyss. Here we have an example of dominance done right. We can see this photo package. It's a series of photos, but they're clumped together, therefore making the most dominant large photo or photo package on the spread, two to three times larger than anything else on the spread. Along with the dominant story right next to it, we've got people angled into the gutter so we're not losing them off the page. We also have the dominant package touching the eye line. So the eye line is an imaginary or created line based on alignment that travels through the spread and also through the book. It kind of creates um, a super highway to kind of travel your eye from one side to the other to kind of help navigate, but also to keep um, the pages as we're flipping consistent to kind of give us a nice travel point throughout the entire book. Um, so here's another example of dominance done right. We Here we have our eye line up uh, towards the top of the spread. An eye line should be either in the top third or the bottom third of the page. We have our dominant package touching the eye line. Um, our next uh, largest package also touching the eye line to really ground the spread. We're not losing anybody's face into the gutter, which is right here. And in the um, dominant package is pretty much center of the page. So here you can see the center mark. Um, it's pretty well grounded towards the center, giving us a nice bullseye effect to really draw us in like little hummingbirds to the flower. All right, guys. That's dominance. Hopefully I talked fast. You got some extra notes to add on to the ones that we started yesterday. And you'll be awesome in creating dominant photo package or packages um, for your spread to really help ground our viewers as they travel throughout our book and give them a nice flow and hierarchy so they can really enjoy reading our book as well. Bye guys. Have a great rest of your day.